Hello, my name is Kurak Tubert Kubur and I am the owner and founder of Holistic SEO and Digital. In this video, I will explain what anti-database SEO is and I will do it via uh, an SEO case that actually I have published before and I have updated it four times. Whenever I updated it, actually the website doubled its traffic and this might be the last update for it because always protecting a website, uh, it's really hard after a point because when you manage an, uh, manage an agency and once you actually prove your point, uh, after a point you feel that actually, uh, okay, I have made my point and now uh, there is no need for doubling it all the time. So let me explain this as your case study to you so that you can actually understand how you can leverage the entity-oriented search for better organic search performance and the rankings. This website, it is a bookstore. When I finished the SEO case, it became the actual sixth largest e-commerce website in Turkey. So we have 80 million population and Turkey is not a country that actually read all the time. So if as a, if as a bookstore, if you're able to be the sixth largest e-commerce website, it is a really big success. <clears throat> I can definitely tell it, especially as a bookstore. And in this case, I have started to work with the project during this area. Actually, it started around the February and the July was the first victory for us. And during this time, you can even realize that actually we have gained way much more queries than the before. So this is the way, what I call actually as the initial ranking. If you are not able to prove actually all of the quality that you deserve during the initial ranking, after a point, a topical consolidation might happen. There are two ways for the topical consolidation. One is losing traffic and losing queries. The other one is losing most of the queries but gaining more traffic. So the second one is actually the, uh, a better ranking event in this case. And if you check the example in this area, we continue to actually regain our lost queries and we gained even more. It means that we have gained more queries that we can actually rank, we have indexed more. Then we lost one of the actual core algorithm updates and it is the May and during the update I also explained that. And this area, this missing part and then the coming these best hour version in this area actually uh, i will explain you how i analyze the data graph or let's say semantic content network that i have and how i realize the query groups and then actually according to these metrics what we have focused on to bring all these connections associations declarations or factual pro propositions to closer to each other <clears throat> So one more thing is, as I say in the topical consolidation, as you realize here, we gain way much more traffic with actual less queries. So this is what the consolidation is. And I can tell that it is the last part of the actually topical authority uh, projects or the case studies. So this is, uh, if you talk about from the semantic SEO perspective, this is already a mature saturated project in terms of the semantics. When it comes to the technical SEO part, we have nothing there due to the uh, due to the some internal problems because uh, that's why actually I became a holistic SEO because there are three main pillars for the SEO semantics and brand reputation or let's say brand entity identity which also involves the page rank reviews mentions brand authority brand search demand and etc and of course the technical seo so when you don't have the technical seo you have to focus on the other two or just one of them and uh, i can tell that actually yes we have the brand power here but our competitors actually they have very much stronger brands than actually us so i can tell that it is not also an advantage uh, here for us so let's move on to the, this section so that i can show you the case study that i have written and updated many times so this is a case that i have published together with the inlinks you can also check them i like uh, their team their understanding they write really good articles and they can help you but and besides that I will be also publishing this case study with the latest version in my own website, Holistic SEO that Digital 2. Probably I will open a section there as the case studies to collect and gather everything in a single place so that actually people can find them in an easier way. But I will be giving a canonical to do in this area. You can even also check how the cross domain canonicalization work if the original author actually publishes the same content uh, within a web source that is closer to the, its own identity. Uh, so I just wonder that part a little too. <clears throat>
And with that said, I have put many researches here. You can also check these things because this area is actually from the entity-oriented search book of the Christian Balak. So Christian is a really important person because he is educating the new uh, Google engineers. And entity-oriented search actually is a free book. You can directly download it to your Kindle and you can read it. Sometimes I check it to remember some concepts. And actually Christian has gathered and standardized many definitions. So it's a really good research. And this is the testimony of the company and these are the a quick analysis of the broad core algorithm updates so since 2019 first it was negative so January 13 2022 negative so May 4 2022 natural this one the December 3 2022 harsh to negative so natural and then once we make the changes then actually it is strongly positive so the first uh, update that we have won in this area it is important because you are reversing the negative ranking state. If you read my actually how Google does, how Google is ranking uh, case study and the research, you can understand what I mean with the ranking state. If you always see a positive or negative change from day to day with further scores or further characterization of this direction, it means that actually it is about your basically ranking state. And this is a, a few weeks later version. You can see that uh, the, the technical issue is really, really bad. Uh, in terms of page uh, loading time performance, uh, as you see, most of the website is actually already poor. You can see the old Google Search Console coverage report. I didn't refresh that part, but I can tell that it is very much worse right now. You can even realize the alternate page with the proper canonical tag because we have millions of actual ranking uh, ranking signal delusion samples, keyword cannibalization samples. You can even check the indexing signal confusions in this area. So it is really uh, important to actually get these sections because you can even check not founds or you can also check these quality issues. We actually have many product pages that are not indexed even if it is crawled and some of them are not even crawled even if they are explored or found in the internal link circulation. It, it is a clear signal that actually for certain segments of the website and for certain uh, web pages with a certain layout and context, they are not listed by Google anymore because uh, the page doesn't have a value that much. So these were the problems that uh, that I faced when I started the project. You can see there is no good URL even on actually desktop too. And these are just some of the other technical SEO problems. You can see the numbers here. By the way, crawling the entire website actually takes seven days. I have actually explored 20 million URLs and Google even that didn't touch most of them because they didn't go to that part. I call these websites obese websites websites that are bloated with the toxic uh, toxic uh, garbage of the servers, web servers or CMS systems or bad, uh, let's say bad, uh, bad CMO approach or this type of things. So this is the rever state of the reversing the negative ranking state and you can see the metrics in this area. And this section is important because I have given some uh, concrete tangible suggestions for improving the entity-based uh, search performance. For example, comparing entities on different web pages, but on this section, please use your own mind, your own brain, not the tools. You can't be a tool-minded person. And at the same time, co comparing the context and content angle. These are important because there are two contexts on every web page, macro context and micro context. And you should choose only one macro context and it should be reflected on your title in a proper way. And the next headings should actually validate that specific title with some narrowed, narrowing context areas, like asking the same thing with a longer preposition or directly focusing on the most related uh, other types of attributes and comparing facts or facts or prepositions or semantic role labels for these entities again if you learn these concepts you will be able to do it directly with, with your brain because you will realize that there is a pattern you don't have to crawl everything and then process everything actually uh, yes i am telling that but just for trying for example while even i am talking yes i am using nlp for certain things for instance, here I'm using keyboard for actually extracting some key central uh, three grams from a certain website. I just wonder actually this course a little, but that's why I'm doing it. But it doesn't mean that actually I am doing it all the time. Most of the time, actually, I don't do these things. Most of the time, I if I do it, actually, it is just for training the author. Uh, nothing, no more than that. You don't have to use a tool. Uh, but if you are a beginner, try to use uh, or try to check these things if you don't feel confident enough. 
And comparing site-wide engrams, site-wide engrams actually show what you are and why you are writing about it. As you remember, in the helpful content update, Google stated that you shouldn't write something just for taking the traffic. Your source identity, what you are, should be connected to the topic that you are writing. And when I publish, actually, uh, the next SEO case that I that I will publish, it will be about this, because sometimes sometimes you are asking me, uh, how can I write about a second topic? If I start to write about another topic, would Google actually demote me? So how can I actually make them connected to each other? To be able to write about multiple things without losing your traffic, you should actually create some contextual bridges. And with the entity-oriented search, we will be able to do that. And anchor tags from outgoing and incoming links. Yes, Google actually indexes also the anchor tags. So if you have a specific macro context, be sure that there is a single entity in that context and a strong one or two different attributes. In this case, your anchor tags actually, <coughs> according to the query semantics, and I will publish another video for it, but basically if you don't know what query semantics is, query semantics means that the search terms or the terms in the search query changes its meaning according to the query context rather than the definition of the dictionary of Oxford or somewhere, somewhere like Cambridge. So based on this, you should understand that if you are using an anchor tag, it should include a related entity or a related attribute or highly closely related or complementary context and the angle should be different. So once you get these things, you will be able to actually multiply these things like it is a pattern. And as I say, if you check the semantic content network creation article that I have written, you will see that what is the importance of query templates and document templates and intent templates. When it comes to the semantic web, everything is patterned already. We just actually add more details on that. And another suggestion from me in this article is take all of the attributes of any specific entity, give them an order based on relatedness of the attribute for the source and popularity of the attribute to generate better questions. If you go to the dear, dear mentor, Bill Slavsky's website, if you check even his last article, unfortunately the last one, uh, not this, here actually he is talking about identifying the subjective attributes of the entities. This last patent that he has actually explained in this area, it is actually about uh, in this section, if you search for let's say best, mic let's say microphones, I'm not sure actually Google will uh, show that specific pro product uh, section here. Let me check. Do you see it? Uh, top 30. Okay, it will work too. By the way, this is also important too. Why, why the top 30? Why not top 40? Anyway, if you click one of these things actually under the popular products panel, I call them actually popular products panel. I, ha I have to, I had to find this name because they don't give a proper name. Anyway, these are subjective attributes. See, rich and clear, for instance, it says. Or if, or if you check these areas again, you will see some other things. By the way, this structure here, you see, it is directly actually entity-oriented search uh, art. I can tell that. And if you come to this area as well, actually here Bill explains what are subjective attributes, how they are chosen according to the relatedness and according to the repetitiveness or objectiveness of the specific at, at specific review that mentions that attribute. So in this case, actually, when I tell you to take all the attributes, also take the subjective ones too, as much as possible. And as an expert, give your also subjective opinion just in a separate area in a measurable way and make yourself authority on that topic and try to stay on the consensus. In the last part, we will explain that too. So use a clear sentence structure. I have explained this before too. Do not use long sentences, nested propositions. Give, t give one information per sentence as much as possible. Try to explain things like you are explaining to as someone f five years old. Do not dilute the context of the web page with irrelevant opinions or analogies and other types of entities. Yes, stay on the context, okay? If you, if you start to break the contextual vector, you will dil dilute your ranking signals and process the same entity or same entities from the same type and connect them to all each other. And this was actually what I am doing here in this area. If you check these, actually this article too, the contextual search, this is another case that I have written. And the website that has these uh, samples too, it will come under the case study of uh, lexical relations. And I will be publishing that too. I have written many things, don't worry. They are all coming for training and preparing you to do semantic SEO course. 
That's why I am actually publishing all these things for free, so that actually when I publish the course, at least you should know the concepts like, uh, let's say, source context or query semantics, historical data, re-ranking, initial ranking. If you know these concepts, thinking and communicating with the search engine will be very much easier. Of course, I will be explaining them in a better way in the course. But still, if you know these things uh, and if you start to get used to these things, it will be very much easier. And this ranking difference here, or actually this was zero, complete zero. And then I have started to write about the authors. So from entity-oriented search per uh, perspective, why I have chosen the author biographies. So if you are selling the books, but if you don't actually process all the book genres, all the authors, and then if you don't actually group all these books, are according to the certain types of angles and the context. And if you don't rank and also review these, and if you don't connect these grouper pages to each other as well, not expect Google to actually trust you that much on that specific topic. So even if you are a, actually a kind of uh, e-commerce or a kind of electronic store, you have to actually define what you are selling and you have to help them. At the same time, we have reflected these author biographies and the products inside of the e-commerce product and category pages too. Every category page was linking to certain types of books and the author's biography. Every author biography was linking to a group or by informational content section and also a e-commerce category too. While doing that, you have to also understand what types of anchor tags and annotations, annotation tags were also using as well. So uh, with that said, here I am also mentioning the uh, course as well. Uh, and also, I have to tell that please subscribe to the subscribe to the Holistic SEO newsletter. I will be giving uh, some specific news from that area. Just be uh, a member here. And thanks you for over the 2000 people. I didn't expect to actually reach out that much people, but I am really happy uh, and I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And let me continue. And in this area, actually, I explain how to use a topical authority for e-commerce websites with entity-oriented search understanding. And in this section, if you just read this area, actually, definitional, informational, or comparison-based, or opinion-based, review-based, factual, and commercial content should exist at the same time within an e-commerce site to make source topical authority for certain types of entities with different contextual layers. When I say contextual layer, it means that we have a certain type of contextual domain, Check previous video, we, I explain what it is. Once you have a contextual domain, you will realize that there are subcontexts inside of it. And these subcontexts, they don't create a different index construction. It means that they will be under the same group of actually in a phrase posting list or same group of documents. In this case, you will need to go deeper, you will need to go granular. That's why I am telling you to actually do not, yes, check other pages, but do not imitate them, go beyond them. That's why I tell you to do not care about actually uh, query search volume that much. Try to a little care about actually information gap, provide unique information to prove your expertise very much more. And uh, yes, the, this section too actually, different word distribution possibilities inside of the questions or in this area too, if you have the electronic bikes, let's say mountain electronic bikes, fat tire electronic bikes or similar bikes or different bike types, alternatives to that, electronic bike brands, products, facts, tips, usage, obstacles, advantages. All these things are here actually, they are directly, directly actually attributes. And there are many different concepts that you will need to mention in that area. If you process all these things one by one in a proper way, in a unique way, that in a way that actually expert, prove your expertise, it will be very much easier for you to rank in a permanent la lasting uh, style. And these are some other suggestions that actually I give by defining what a query theme is, what a query context or query aspect and query definitions uh, are actually are. And in this case, understanding the dimensions of the product that you are selling and finding all relevant entities for the product, including its brand, material, inventor, alternatives, and similars, generating the best proper questions for these dimensions of the product, brands, red entities, and their attributes for question generation. Try to actually generate shorter questions and do not repeat the same question twice with a different format. And at the same time, uh, use the most important predicate inside of the question and group your questions as definitional or let's say action-based. If you ask for how to, how to do or how to run, how to swim, blah, 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 blah. These questions are 
For them, certain types of query template, even if they don't have proper search demand, it might start to suppress actually the main question that you are using, which this thing is a little, a little about actually the query team uh, or the query templates. If the query is from a certain template, even if it doesn't have a proper prominence, the search engine might give give it actually very much more weight because they won't be checking every query individually. They will check the overall structure as Paul Har from Google says, they won't care about the individual box that much. So that's why actually sometimes, even if you see that, uh, including a how to question at the bottom might be better. But sometimes you have to care about how the search engines actually operate. So you sh will need to actually use these things uh, to be honest because I don't want to, to spend that much time on this area. But here this section is important using phrase templates, phrase pattern taxonomies and create prominence hierarchy without diluting the context. Phrase patterns and the phrase taxonomies. It is actually a little reflected in this area too. For instance, mountain electronic bikes or mountain electronic bikes under 1000 or fast mountain electronic bikes, slow ones or, or heaviest ones or mountain electronic bikes for let's say children or mountain electronic bikes for using also inside the city. So you have to understand what you can bring before this, what you can bring after this. All these sections will create a certain types of phrase pattern taxonomy and you have to find the most important ones according to their attributes. So this is a comparison here. You can see actually that the traffic is coming back to this area. You can check that. And in this area, you will see that actually our co main competitors, which are very much more stronger and well known from our website, in the same date, they were gaining 70 queries, 44, 58, or 325. When it comes to us, it was 25,000 new keywords. And I can tell that they are publishing the same amount of actually web pages, even more than us, because I didn't have enough level authors. Since I didn't have enough level authors, I had to use some certain tricks or let's say templates and I will be able to explain the less, uh, rest of it later. But in this case, actually, uh, I had to be quicker than them uh, to do more with less resources. And here, these, uh, these pattern here, it is actually about reviewing the entities or it is about reviewable entities. And here you will realize that there are facts, text items with certain IDs, certain definitions for the entities and also some sentiments. This is actually about taking certain, certain types of uh, words or text snippets for entities and then re collecting all these things and gathering and aggregating these things to understand and take them further. This is actually what these things also, what this design also does. If you see the 40 comments use the word cute for 20 times or maybe even more, for a certain entity, cute will be relevant to that specific entity in a subjective way. And uh, with that said, this is what actually happens in this area too. You will always realize that certain types of attributes here, they will use some certain subjective, subjective sections and they will be chosen and uh, also taken too. There are also uh, new, new SERP features like this entity has been reviewed in, this entity has been reviewed or listed in this web source or when you ask what are the fastest uh, scooters or something like that, search engines sometimes tell according to this web source these are the fastest ones. So that's why the source, the source attribute of the same article gets very much more important. To be able to be a topical authority, it means that actually you also have to use third party reviews very much more. I will be talking about it later because I have written some scripts, maybe I can share them too. Uh, but I would suggest you to check actually about this source section. We will touch it a little further too. In this section, I explain uh, what is different the difference between a ranking signal and the ranking factor. I will suggest you to check that. How to define entities by specifying the context. So this is a design from Google. When you ask for who is the king of the Spain, first of all, the context is not that much actually clear. First of all, now you say, who is the queen of Spain, actually? Yes, we are asking the current one. But when you are writing these type of articles, you will have to understand what are other candidate named entities in this area. And since we are asking for right now, we will be choosing this. But you have to actually clearly uh, differentiate these things from each other 
as well and uh, if you actually read these section, sections it will be very much more easier for you to understand too an entity can't change its definition based on languages because entities are language agnostic so in other words meaning doesn't change it is universal but its attributes prominence can for instance the same person might be important with a certain attribute in some area but they might be very much different for another usually i give the example of winston churchill if you go to the uk he is a hero if you go to the india he is definitely not a hero there he has other attributes there and in this case actually when you have the named entities uh, for certain type of uh, sections you have to actually choose the right context according to the interest areas or according to the character of the search behaviors and in this here too i will show these uh, a little better for you uh, in the future sections because in this area we are talking about how to associate certain queries uh, with certain types of entities then we actually find entity seeking queries inside of the answer seeking queries which is a little another topic but we can go uh, to that part later basically here i actually used ontology and taxonomy of any kinds of product that i have and when it comes to the books here, I tell, for instance, the size of the book even, material of the papers even, author, ISBN numbers, price, page count, or image or visual for the cover or the editor. I have asked many things that my competitors actually didn't process in that area. I even actually uh, explained why they should de choose that book or why shouldn't uh, choose that book as well. So during this time, the website, of course, continued to raise further and further. And as I say, the book genres, books from different geographies or books for different geographies. These two are different from each other, okay? They seem so similar, but they are different. Preposition here changes entire context from different geographies or for different geographies. From eras or some other areas too. And you can use these prepositions also or these templates or let's say this contextual layer also for authors as well or even publishers. And in this case, yes, we continued to raise further and further. Website came here. It became the sixth largest in its own category. Then actually we exceeded. Uh, we became the uh, very much better than the before with highest amount of queries, highest amount of actual traffic. And the, this is the actual result in this area. It is nearly 70,000 clicks a day. And this is uh, another version just thanks to entity-oriented uh, search uh, understanding. And according to Ashraf's website, actually, like tripled its traffic when, uh, according to version that we have started, and all all of these things actually happened. When I tell uh, talk about the topical consolidation and initial ranking, see here we search during the initial ranking, we are just getting indexed more, more, more. Search engine collects the historical data according to user feedbacks, and they process our text and its quality. Then we gain queries and the traffic. Then we continue to gain the traffic, but we start to also lose the queries. Total query command here actually has been decreased, but the queries inside of the top three at the first page, they have been increased or they have continued to increase as well. This is what the topical consolidation is. It is important for being able to actually recognize more quality resources and more quality possible topical topical authority candidates search engines they always have to actually diversify the SERP with new candidates this is the google search console graphic in this area so this is the last update area that i have performed because this specific core update it actually affect this one affected the website negatively a little then this one affected the positively this section is important because i will suggest you to uh, do not get hyped or do not get sad or depressive after a broad core algorithm update or even do not feel happy to updates they will come and go and you can't understand or analyze a, a company that that is all 25 years old that actually worth over three three trillion dollars just for a few months search engine engineers they might actually mistakes or they might fix it later too you should just focus on your own understanding and you should implement and practice these methodologies with patience you should just understand what you should fix right now and once we actually gain this one these are the results over over or after other increases as well so in this in the top area i have mentioned the consensus 
So this section here, I will also explain you how you can actually analyze broad core algorithm updates because you have to check what Google actually tried or experimented between two different uh, broad core algorithm updates. If you're able to see what they are testing, it means that actually it will be useful for you to understand what they will be changing even further because product managers and Google search quality teams, they are working together. Usually product managers work on this type of presentations and search quality team, they work at the uh, backend structure actually for uh, organizing this information. And in this area we have a question. It says, how long does it take for light from the sun to reach to earth? So this question is relevant to the actual distance between sun and the earth and we have we need a range because distance between earth and the sun is changing and this fact will be converging itself on also this timing too. So that's why we are giving a kind of timing and in, inside of this web answer, which is the name of the featured snippets according to the Google and the designs. And here we have a consensus and it is directly there. You should think that if you will take make if you will make this eight, nine, whether this web page will rank still or not. This is what we call actually corroboration of the web answers. And this is what I have actually presented uh, this year's uh, Google, let's say, News SEO International uh, presentation uh, or the conference. And in this area, if you check this section, when I explain how search engines leverage opinion-based articles for ranking, you will realize that I started from the uncertain inference and I ended everything inside of the information literacy. Information literacy is connected to these uh, sections that I mentioned, like this entity or this product reviewed by X, according to the X website, these are the most important ones. Because if your source is trustworthy, Google will start to actually show you as the main source of information. And if you are an, if you are an authority enough, you will be determining what is a fact and what is not a fact. If you come to that level with the semantics, it means that what is a fact and what is not a fact will be determined according to the, your information graph. That's why I am telling that semantic content networks, which is here, it is one of the most important things in the SEO. If you create a really good network in a clear way, your competitors will start to lose traffic or they will try to be similar to you by giving you further authority as well. And every project in semantics, they start in this phase. And here you can check the corroboration of web answers. And I can create another presentation just for this actually. Why we need page rank, what is information extraction, why the external databases are important, what is semantic role labeling, question answering, information literacy cues. And these are given by Google. Your visuals, your brand identity, hit lines, tonality, social cues, or how you are in the social media, all these things will be determining actually your success overall. And you can see other types of numeric values that I am giving in this area. And this is a research or design directly from Google with the same type of answers. And they call these things word call outs that actually, I actually, they are called representative answer. But the product manager tell that this is word call out and it reflects the actually uh, consensus. And these are some other designs and these are some bad examples that actually loses their traffic because they are giving really bad information or unquality information. You can check this presentation. It will be useful for you to understand entity-oriented search even further. So Google actually tested these word consensus even further and they have made actually it's more explicit. They have published multiple announcements about helpful content update. It came after to, together with also content advisories, information literacy and information quality. So we have to remember this. Then we have start to see actually that they are giving actually multiple answers inside of actually a single feature snippet in the grid design, which means actually they want to show more answers from multiple sources by and they want to serve more sources because now they have more authorities and more information and they are all actually completing each other. But why they are choosing this? For example, if they choose another sentence from this source, how, will ch how, how they will change what sentence will be chosen or what candidate answer passage will be chosen from here because there is an order or let's say complementary situation between these things and how you should structure your own content to be all to be rank in this area for all the possible combinations and this is actually what probabilistic game 
uh, is like. Then we see that actually they are highlighting with different colors with the answer section, which is about also helpful content update because being responsive is important. Today I actually mentioned that I will make two different concepts really important in SEO. One is information responsiveness. The other one is cost of retrieval. This is actually about information quality and information responsiveness, which is connected to information extraction. That's why check that presentation, please. And when you come here, this is an, another actually uh, multifaceted feature snippet with multiple corroborated answers, again, connected to corroboration of answer, uh, answers too. And here we see that actually Google, they actually removed all the people also asks in one day, then they have brought all of them back. But this time we actually start to the hat multiple people also ask questions. Then we also start to see that they are, they have actually expanded the total length of answers that can appear inside of a people also ask question accordion with a kind of read more button in foreign languages too. So this was also one of the things. It means that actually, yes, they want to give more, but they also want to show complete answers too. And it is rare that you can see a listicle like this inside of actually uh, a kind of question like that. Then we also have seen that they are giving voice answers inside of the people also ask if you don't want to just read, they give you the chance of actually listening. Again, we see these colorizations and this time they are colorizing actually the specific entity that appears in the query. And here too, they also color entire answer together. It shows that actually marking and making the specific answer uh, a little more stand alone is very much more important. And you can also use these type of colorizations or boldings uh, like this for actually helping search engine to show where you should focus on. And these colorization is different than this because this is about information retrieval. This is about actually information extraction. Maybe I can explain it a little later. Then we started to see actually these type of product uh, expandable panels. And in these expandable panels, even there are very much more things. And you, we can even call these things like, I usually tell SERP inside of SERP. So it, it is like uh, a kind of matrix. And this is actually what Google is anyway, but uh, it's let's say, it is like a hyper -serp. I can call it like that, like that. Uh, maybe we can use this name for expressing these expandable and switchable contextual SERP instances from images or from sellers, from reviews, from videos, from also other alternate products to do uh, also uh, given some uh, scrape reviews too. You see that actually we have all these things together and then actually they decrease the click gap between different types of search verticals. Then they also give certain types of uh, explanations about knowledge panels. Here they tell knowledge panels are automatically generated and information that appears in a knowledge panel comes from various sources across the web. In some cases, we may work with data partners who provide authoritative data on specific topics like movies, musics, or and combine the da data with information from other open web sources. And if they are using your web web source in this type of areas to define these things, it means that you are a topical authority because all these things are coming from semantic web. And these are my actual conclusions for September uh, broad core algorithm update by also using the May broad core algorithm update too. You can actually read these things and I can tell actually that I am using also their patterns or their other uh, projects like Google launched the Imagine for image to text and text to image generation with AI, which shows that actually they're able to understand the context of the images way much better than before. Google published and announced new language models such as pathway language model or cost effective and adaptive language model, quantization for East, fast and environmentally sustainable reinforcement learning and generalized object localization with natural language queries. So I will suggest you to check these research papers. The most important one actually this and this, uh, this is also important to show actually how these language models are expensive to use. As you see here, for a single event, I am working on more than five hours. Most probably I will cancel it, but anyway. And here, if you just read these sections, it will help you because Google diversifies the SERP with new results and new answers and contextual bridges, which actually shows you that you also have to decrease the click gap by while going actually very much more granular as well. Google unites multiple verticals of search under the web and universal search by adding more connections from visuals, reviews, and brands to regular query results. The entity-oriented search featured Google update continued to the on Google knowledge panels by fastening the edit requests because 
they are changing the information in the knowledge panels very much faster than before to be honest and uh, lastly this is just as you see we have lost the uh, an, an update here and it was the a little effect of the actual topical consolidation too and here I actually explain what a topical consolidation is for search engines and what is broad index refresh as well if you read these two concepts it will be really useful for you to understand these areas but if I can explain you uh, why the topical consolidation might be just a little dangerous for your website as well for instance let's say this is a query network in this area and let's say inside of the adaptive search, search engine is able to actually connect all these queries to each other with certain search behaviors or let's say query paths. And if it is a situation here, you will realize that actually at some point you will need to cover all these things. But during the topical consolidation, the search engine actually might start to rank you higher for these queries here, but you might actually get the index for these two. In this case, if this happens, it means that actually there is a discordance from these queries to these queries, because as you see, your main connection between these areas or the connection from here to here, it actually comes from this area. If you aren't able to rank for these two anymore, after a point, you will be losing rankings on this area too, because the semantic distance between these things now they are higher and that's why the, during the topical consolidation in other words while losing queries if you are gaining the traffic it means that you are coming more relevant to a certain topic but you are also coming to the a little less relevant to the another one the distance between these contextual domains it will actually help you to stay here or it will go so what was the area that i am losing in this section it was the educational queries education type of entities because the highest search demand in Turkey when it comes to the little the books, it is actually coming from, it's not coming from novels, unfortunately, or philosophy, I wish it could. But it's actually coming from the university exams or high school exams or other types of exams, the exam books or workbooks or test books. So that's why I had to dive in directly to do actually... Uh, let's say university exam related books or working styles or let's say even the student lifestyle so I had to focus on these type of things more so I brought these things back and then actually I started to come back in this area too so if you're able to find the gap in your semantic content network to fill it you will go very much more safer area that's why I'm telling that actual diversification of the SERP not just the people also ask but other areas while actually decreasing the click gap between these things, it might be helpful for you. Once I close the gap, still actually I continue to lose the, a little the queries, but as you see, traffic is coming back. And these are just the initial results. As you see, it is coming to do nearly actually, to be honest, like 80,000 clicks a day, which is better than before. And uh, let me also explain this concept too. What is broad index refresh? So broad index refresh means that after every update, Google is actually refreshing its index already but when it comes to the broad index refresh it means that for certain queries some resources they will be deleted or let's say the index and some new resources will be coming and this happens usually after the broad core algorithm updates so you have to use the broad core algorithm updates as a point of stating that i am one of the most authoritative comprehensive and trustworthy resources out there for this topic if you're able to tell it in a strong way, you will be actually considered as one of the candidates during that refresh. And during that refresh, actually, this consolidation might happen in a good way for you. And you can check this patent for actually uh, this this area too, because I a little talk about the caffeine system of the Google here. So you should understand that they always refresh the index. When I say broad index refresh, it is a very much more bigger actual refreshment that area because they can't do these refreshment all the time it will be costly it wouldn't create enough data to test existing source prioritization so they need historical data to test these things the once they are sure they will remove some and they will bring some new some new ones so during this area uh, during this area too actually this is again the latest change area i will suggest you to check these things too to be honest uh, like focusing on more educational topics. This is one of the things that what I have done, covering educational books, lectures, researches, and focusing on university materials, focusing on exams, connecting the educational materials to the stationary e-commerce pages, extending contextual coverage to the scientific research and study topics, extending the contextual coverage to the school lectures, their topics and necessary books, focusing on the school ages and school-related
related children books, extending the coverage to student needs and the student lifestyle, increasing the coverage for the internal links and anchor tech variations as well. So this is what I call as a negative ranking state. Uh, this is a website that I ex ex accepted for helping only. You can see how the machine learning works in this area too. But as you see, until to the last part of the broad car algorithm update, they were losing the traffic all the time gradually and they were losing this traffic because they were in a negative ranking state. It helps for search engines to be sure that the decision that they have given just in the last update, yes, we are right to actually demote this website because we have actually better candidates. If you just remove you directly from the index by doing these actually broad index refreshment, they might be giving the wrong, wrong decision. But if they collect enough level of data, as I stated in the historical data paper uh, or the case that I mentioned, then they are more confident. And that's why here I explain actually every broad core algorithm actually focus might focus on different things. They might focus on multiple topics or different topics. They might try to actually refresh or change the source prioritization or they might change how the queries are uh, should be actually inferred or what they should be related to. That's why I must tell that if you are losing traffic after a broad core algorithm update, there is one more possibility there. Sometimes all the websites from a certain type, they together lose traffic. For instance, during the uh, September broad core algorithm update of Google, all the review websites, except the Trustpilot a little, they actually started to lose really tremendous amount of traffic to the certain other types of service providers. And when I publish the next, uh, next video you will actually see an aggregator website there i can tell that actually during the may may broad core algorithm update many aggregators and affiliates or middlemans let's say they have lost really good amount of traffic and the actual service providers or product manufacturers and sellers they have started again during the september it was a little more balancing the situation here so in this case sometimes even if you do everything right if google doesn't like the type of the website they will just switch certain types of websites with certain types of other websites which is about actually information foraging uh, and SERP construction for the highest possible click satisfaction that we can dive into it later and i can tell that this is the last state better than ever and again as you see we are gaining new queries especially from the educational state so you can consider this is another initial ranking during the re-ranking the google again will give a decision and there will be a consolidation again we will find more gaps and we will repeat the process and this is the last uh, screenshot for that and i have given my last tours as i say it is really hard to uh, always update these things, write this much content here. As you remember, see that we, the, the video is already like 46 minutes. It is tiring, I know, but I believe I have given practical examples here too. Now let me just give you an example here. I have written this article for Serpstat. Actually, I have, I am talking about Python here, uh, and I have written this for In the Memory of Hamlet Batista. But here I have to mention you something. When it comes to the searching for Abraham Lincoln, I realized that whenever for the queries like who is Abraham Lincoln, if the article starts to say Abraham Lincoln is the person who has been assassinated by XYZ on that date, that article doesn't rank that much. That's why I'm telling that you have to choose actually which attributes and which entities you have to focus on further. If you focus on the wrong attributes with the wrong, by giving the wrong type of uh, weight on that area, you won't be able to actually rank there that much. If you check this article to the bottom area, I explain actually what page actually shows what kinds of a weight on which attributes. It will be helping you to actually write in a better way all these things. And here, actually, I explain how the rankings uh, change a little uh, from hour to hour even. So that's why I'm telling that focusing on the presidentship attribute of the Abraham Lincoln is more important than actually that cause. If you have the verse like kill, if you have the verse like some other types of predicates, the article actually is losing the <laughs> traffic. So that's why I am telling that in the entity-oriented search, you have to understand which entity, what attribute, and what context. Once you get it with the ad pattern, 
you will be able to actually do many good things by, by training some certain authors. So now the research papers and the patents, as you do, I do it in the last part. I might share these links, but you, most of them actually is inside of my computer. So here, enter ranking in Wikipedia. This is a research paper. I will suggest you to check it because Wikipedia is a search engine too, and how they rank the entities is the certain effect actually how Google is also ranking the entities too, because they are taking most entities uh, from that area as well since they are training their language models uh, with the content from uh, Wikipedia because it's the most consistent, well editorial uh, resource out there. If you check the Collogial for data set, you will get what I mean. And if you check this one here, this is a pattern. It says entity display priority in a distributed geographic information system. This is about actually more about actually local search and according to which situation, what query type or how your uh, previous visits they actually try to understand which business place actually should bring rank they don't tell business place because local SEO is already entity oriented since it exists actually and when you come to the, this one uh, let me just check entity action suggestion on a mobile device this is about actually what they can suggest you for certain types of contexts or the behaviors if you read the news they will realize actually there are some certain types of information here according to that they will be suggesting some different types of actual behaviors uh, that appear according to the entities that appear on the screen they will be suggesting new uh, types of behaviors unnamed entity recognition of the sense mentions so this is important because we also have unnamed entities which are concepts but sometimes some certain types of phrase combinations you will realize that like sound of clanking or let's say sound of birth etc some certain phrases they it is really helpful for algorithms to actually extract these sense mentions in a better way when you read these type of things you will actually start to understand how you should structure your certain phrase combinations in a better way as well selecting content using entity properties this is from google uh, important really important because according to the query team and the definition as you see there are different types of hierarchies and taxonomies here like the business product line category film film detected or other types of uh, entity attribute combinations here then they are trying to actually choose different content types here according to the use sections it might be a little complicated too but if you read these uh, sections here it will be really helpful for you if you don't like actually reading the long papers just check these diagrams uh, uh, flow diagrams i believe they are called it will be useful for you you don't have to read everything because in some areas uh, they just describe the hardware for legal reasons so you don't need to understand what a CD room is that much when it comes to here associating an entity with a search query I mentioned this one already and here actually if you check this query to entity association system query to entity association database query suggestion system entity properties database all these things actually are helpful when you search for the Washington it might be a state it might be actually capital uh, city at some place it might be a person or it might be university or other things here so we have many uh, many candidates in this area that's why actually ranking for the single uh, word queries is a little harder because they are really ex implicit for the uh, further context in this uh, section this is actually what the knowledge panel designed <laughs> from past years and you should check actually to understand the entity based search and entity SEO you should also check the question answering using entity references in the unstructured data unstructured data is your text and this is the example that I have already shown but there are some others uh, in this area if you check they will explain how actually they choose these things and then I have the then how actually they choose the last one as well you will realize that there are different types of networks here and you will be able you will be have to give these things with the correct order with the correct sentence structures and then actually uh, you'll be able to rank very much higher to be honest so this is a little different uh, one ranking search results based on entity matrix so determine related entity metric notable type metric and determine contribution metric price metric domain specific weights so if you read this it will be fun for you because uh, the language of this pattern is very much different and if you read uh, this you will see that actually for certain topics certain type of attributes are weighted more and uh, based on that again as i say you have to understand which attribute is more important that that cause or the presidentship let's say or for Johnson, for example, he is an actor in the Hollywood. He is also a president. So which one is more important for which area? 
and context-based natural language processing. This is important too, according to context, how the content actually is being processed. It is explaining that. If you check these examples in this area, it will be very much more useful for you. As I say, even if you just uh, check some diagrams or read a little abstract and then check the claims, please, it will be good for you. If you read the background, they explain why they are actually inventing these or taking the patent as well. Another one, selecting content based uh, on aggregate entity co-occurrence. This is a little actually, this is reminding me to actually context based person search. But it is also important if you have two or three different entities, what is the context there? If I mention five countries from a certain region, it might be about their relations or it might be about their climate change and it might be about their cooperation or conflict as well. If I mention five countries with a certain type of word, they say earthquake, it might be a natural uh, disaster and how they are helping each other or how they are affected. With five different country names from five different continents, then if I actually mention a word like, let's say, GDP, it might be the poorest countries from every continent or it might be the richest country, countries from every continent as well. When it comes to lexical relations, it will be a little more obvious, but you will need to use these things as well. Entity-based searching with content selection. So here too, you will actually start to see that they are completing each other all the time, but they are not the same. Uh, this is one of the actual mistakes of the shallow minds because whenever you have a certain definition difference it means that it is a different thing that actually they are defining in that area and it might be actually helpful for you to understand actually which word might actually mean what with what context with what relation there it might be useful and assigning terms of an interest to an entity yes every entity has actually different uh, weights for different interest areas it, it actually signals you even if you don't sell that product, even if you are not that much relevant to that section, again, you will need to actually mention that or you will need to process that, that area as well. It means that related entities, no need for even mentioning, but if you check the names in this area, they are really important. I will suggest you to actually check these names, also this one too. It will be helpful for you to actually read further, uh, further let's say, inventions according to that and system and method for associating images with the semantic entities this is important too because it's about google landmarks it is already actually being done if you read this paper then if you go to the actual let's say google landmarks you if you read the project from the product manager it will be very much easier for you there is also a data set here actually directly from google you can understand how they are actually taking these things it was it is also published in google ai blog and also google uh, research uh, let's say repository as well check these things because it will be easier for you to understand what is the relation of a patent to the a research and then to do also uh, let's say machine learning from the Google side as well and identifying the salient semantic relation paths between two words and in this area they try to understand what is the semantic distance between two different objects or let's say two different concepts from water lock to the water and what kinds of a relation uh, exists between them like flute or like the boat which one is connected to what according to what like boot or boat or water log, float, water, or different types of area, boat, bob, water. And all these things go like that, boat, shallow, water. This is hypernym, this is the domain for that. So in this, by saying domain, it means actual knowledge domain in a way. And if you check these things here, it is about lexical relations, which will be one of the next SEO cases that I will be publishing. So I believe I have explained many things in this area. You already have checked uh, these things. This is the initial 28 com days comparison. This will be actually doubled again. And uh, since the update is new, it is just showing its new effect uh, newly. So I believe I am coming to the one hour. I know that I am actually adding the longest videos to the here because I am trying to prepare you to the course. I have explained many concepts. Please check them and you can also check actually my previous videos as well. It will be useful for you. Subscribe to the newsletter because soon I will be giving some other types of unique articles or unique videos or unique suggestions there. I believe I have also given the practical examples here too. Especially when I tell, find the gap after the topical consolidation, then actually go for it go further for it and please do not get uh, depressive or also really happy after a core update it will be it will pass rankings are not permanent it is just rented for 
that area and I also publish uh, how to expand a topical map without breaking the contextual bridges or connections and without actually diluting the context or authority for another topic and without harming the trustworthiness of the source there will be another case for that as well it will be published too so i talk a lot but you are still here i really appreciate it and thank you for listening to me see you in the next ones